Здравствуйте, and welcome to this and that Russian national edition. I feel like I should have a Christmas tree on the left and the right. Jonathan, yes. my name is Dave Lees, and welcome to the skating lesson. Thanks so much, Dave Lees. It's great to be here as always, this time coming to you from a hotel room in Indiana. So all Indiana. the fun places. See, yeah. the hotel room is actually, it's quite nice. It looks like a very nice Marriott that you're in. I, let's not get carried away, Dave. Well, it's functional. It's functional. I, I like that for the holiday season, they have the um, the blanket in another color, the comforter that's folded across. So I think it's a nice touch for the holiday a season. Wintry, a wintry color spread, like the many Christmas decorations seen at Russian Nationals this yes. year. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I even have a metaphor for one of the trees, but I'll oh. save it for a juicy moment within the recap. You know, it is my favorite it is my favorite event of the holiday season. It has been ever since we watched Plushenko and his comeback for the Olympics. It's been such a holiday treat. But exactly, we have to start before Russian nationals, Jonathan, because this story really started a week prior, maybe on a Tuesday. <laughs> One of the most pleasant, Canadian, kind, insufferable members of the skating community <laughs> released an interview with the Terry Dudberidze. Now, Jonathan, I would like to know your honest take of this because I was watching it at night and I was like a little tired and I really like, I didn't know if I could make it through all 14 minutes. I didn't know there was so much bullshit that was like spewed within like, and not by a Terry, not, not just by a Terry doing her PR. It was right. by, yeah. Well, and this is something, first I'm going to deviate from it for a and second. And she's not any different, by the way. When Tom yeah. Z talks, he's spewing Coach PR. When Raphael talks, they're spewing Coach PR. So that was not like, yeah. There, there is always an element of that, but you also got something real behind someone like Raphael. Also, within, there's, there's a self-promotion, understandably so. But then there is this element, like when we do our interviews, when I've watched other interviews with you, you reach a point in the interview, a couple minutes in, mm -hmm. where it becomes conversational. Mm -hmm. That's and it's when just it's dangerous. <clears throat> and well, that's when I it's authentic. And yes. that's what I like. But in these when it's so stiff and rehearsed, and I read you the question, and I wait for your response, which can only be canned, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it becomes a little uncomfortable. And it took me many times to get through it. I find myself I'm someone who in comfort, uncomfortable situations, I just look down and I found myself alone in my hotel room looking down and away from the screen because I was so uncomfortable by the exchange. And she gives off an energy and maybe she has to, maybe she has to be very guarded because it sounds like the press um, for skating in Russia can be very brutal as yeah, opposed to how it's- a strong woman. They're behind the victor. So- But she, every interview I've ever seen with her is very much like a what, what's your question? So when you, and it, it would unnerve when you, you I think. have to, I've interviewed these people. When you interview a person like that, you need to come out them prepared with a specific question, with a specific point. Specific, and, yeah. And you need to look them in the eye and ask the question. And get real. Because yes. it's one of those things is sometimes there's also in an attempt to make sure no one's getting offended or or taken aback, sometimes the questions are answering themselves before you've even finished the question. If, if, for so instance- So she lost her respect, like she knew that she was gonna mull over, bulldoze him within the first two seconds when he goes, I would like to thank you for your work and how you made the sport a better place. And she was like, okay, I got this. You know, like, yeah. this is ridiculous. I see what kind of interview you are looking Stupid for. Stupid Canadian man, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and like, that yeah. is what happened in, throughout the whole interview. But it made it worse. Now, I understand for him, like, she's made his career happen. He was some, like, little, I, you know, guy in the ISU, working with the ISU from Canada. And because her skaters have dominated the Junior Grand Prix, she's obviously played a big part in his success as that they have grown and obviously her skaters have been winning so that's been like obviously for him she's like madonna right like right. she has made right. him be relevant and happen in a sense and if it was just like the random girl from japan who was third or fifth or you know whatever so and, well, and it becomes a thing where you wonder if they're looking for the sound bites for instance when you did the interview with unsu like mm -hmm. it 
it just started being quoted places because you had the content. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy. I could see them looking for sound bites from this interview, such as like, what will she say about injuries and things like that in a Canadian interview? But, but like, she, was, she wasn't giving them. So Well, he didn't ask the question. He did. That was the problem of the whole interview. And I know like initially yeah. there were a couple skating fans who love everything. They were like, oh, it was so good. And I was like, because she cried on command? Like, no. The, the reason, right. the thing was that he, that was so ridiculous. And that I think has been my issue with him is I noticed it. Like, I always find it a little annoying, but my thing is when he started, he's gotten, as he's gotten more comfortable in feeling himself more as a broadcaster, he started adding on like Tarasova levels of BS as he's talking, mm. but okay. only he doesn't have her gravitas and experience. So when he is talking about um, Costa and I, he's like, she made a decision to be the best at the Grand Prix final and to skate to the maximum of her ability and to defeat her other girls. And I'm like, she didn't have the quads. Had one of those girls landed, she would not have won. Like, yes. And here's, and here's the thing, Dave. I understand because he's doing juniors and it's cultural a bit that there is a, an extra layer of kindness. And, and bullshit. I, I, and, okay, moment of honesty. For some reason this season, I have been watching, are you ready for it? Duke basketball. <laughs> What is happening? And I was listening to the commentators. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, let's really listen how they do this with these college age kids. It's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, they have one commentator that's just like blowing smoke. That's like, yeah. you know, they just really now believe they're the best. And I was like, to me, as an artist, that's insulting to think that it was just a switch of the mind and it doesn't take masterful approach to the training, to mm -hmm. the technique, to the approach, like all yeah. of these sorts of things. Um, and subsequently, some of them are just downright mean, some mm -hmm. of the other commentators. And it's something that lacks from this sport because it's something is so personal. Mm -hmm. And if you, ins if you insult someone's artistry or if you insult someone like that, it is a, a bit more personal than if it was a team sport or just a regular competitive thing. But there's a way to say, you know, Kostarnaya has to really rely on these beautiful things because if she makes a mistake, she's not in a position to have a cushion technically. So say that, that's not rude. We're just mm -hmm. talking about strategies and approaches to the sport that make the, that make the fans smarter. And that's what we're looking for. I don't, I, it doesn't have to be dumbed down. So I he guess. crossed a line from like editorializing to just being like Lynn Plage PR to being like uh, completely full of it. In the moment that killed me, when he, first of all, he was talking about the individual approach to each girl, which I was like, bless. And then yeah. it was, he said, and your girls don't seem to get injured. And it was like... Even she flinched. Yeah, she even was she like, was like... Have yeah. you followed Sherbakova's story? Have you Sherbakova. followed like any of these remember stories? Remember Dmitry Aliyev? Remember the other boys that have come and gone? And um, yeah. how about the psychological injuries? How about Yulia, who was in treatment? How about like all right, the exactly. other... Right, exactly. Yeah. So it was a very fun interview. But my favorite moment of a Terry Jonathan was like, she is such... I love her. Like, I really do. Like, I think people think that we, I'm, like, fascinated. She's better than the Carolis. Like, I have to say, she is more interesting. She's clearly had to fight for everything she has. And I, I appreciate that. She built something and she was handed nothing. She's very you know smart. I mean? She's a very smart yes. person. Now, she knows that these girls are here today, gone tomorrow. Like, that right. is just not... She's just, like, she plays along. But she knows right. that, like, the girl is done. Like, whatever happened with right. her... And you've given him to be the like she in her view she said the honest truth whatever and Zagitova right. is next you know like right now right and and she was also funny because in Russian nationals she was strategically in the kiss and cry with whichever girl she thought was going to win and if you notice she was there for Trusova she was not there for Sherbakova and the kiss and cry like and they planned that stuff not just see I didn't know if that was because she had to put someone on the ice but no because did she, she didn't go to put she didn't even go to put Sherbakova on the ice if you watched okay. it was just Danny and Dudikov so that was funny too is it but she has 17 and, students and there's games and a shipping. real giveaway Dave is like and I understand this is bound to happen and I don't even think mm. she knew it was happening but when she realized Trusova did not win mm. she slapped her knee a little bit like yes. darn we were so close and I was like oh honey that's your girl that you're talking yeah. about that that beat her like yeah um about Sherbakova is definitely Danny G's baby like that seems to be his baby um and oh my god and Kostanaya is just mine yes <laughs> oh my yeah. god well I don't know she came uh, so there was this guy on Twitter well when we get to her I'll talk about the annoying guy on Twitter but okay. 
Okay. By the way, never emailed me, and I said I'll gladly have a long discussion with you. But you, okay. you know, I'll give you exhibit A, B, and C, and okay. I'm not gonna like argue with you over 140 characters where you can like you know twist shit. Okay. So anyway, during the interview, she <laughs> he goes, "So who did you look up to as a skater?" And like, she was just waiting for this stupid man to this ask her. Shady. This was so shady. And she was not only did she go. I love Brian Boitano. Now, she knows that when you lose the Olympics, you never get over that. Like, ever. Right. You know, like, there, it always Let bothers you. Let alone twice. Let like, alone twice. Yes. When, like, you, I'm, when like, you won the won the free program in 84, but still had that silver. <laughs> like, we've talked to Linda about it. Right. Roz, we've talked to about it. Michelle fired her coach four years later and seemed, like, not in the best place. Uh, Brian seems to have some... He gives off an energy. We're going to talk about this later. And I really like him, but it's like a... You could just tell that this like bothers him to his core, you know? And like right. people from his camp will be like, well, he was better than Boitano, or he was better than Hamilton. And they'll tell you all the stuff about the ISU and all of this. So anyway, it was just a really magical moment. And not only that, she goes, he was so handsome. He had such big jumps. Like, basically being like Orser's jumps weren't... So good. And yes, it, it was very easy to read the, between the yeah. lines on that one. It was amazing. It was And she yeah. did it with such a straight face. It was the greatest. Yeah. Like, she had that in the back of her mind ready to go for the right moment. And it was right. like, I loved it. I was like, yeah. you, that is why you're successful. You. I see you. Yeah. You, <laughs> you're. I think what we learned about Russian Nationals this week is you have to take your moment. You have to see the opportunity and go for it and execute. And that's what she does. She just... And one of the most insightful things, when Elvis Stoiko was on your show, he was like, you're only handed so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. You come bursting through that door and take it because you don't know if it's ever going to come again. Yeah. And, and you have to. And she does. And that, you know, in, on the ice, off the ice. So anyway, these nationals, we can start with Yevgenia Medvedeva. Um, obviously, she was just named second alternate to the European Championships. Um, behind Konstantinova, behind uh, Alina Zagitova, behind uh, Sofia Zamudurova, uh, uh, Elizaveta Tukhtimisheva is the first alternate. Um, so, not so good for her. She's kind of, if she were to go to Europeans, she's kind of relying on um, maybe Zagitova withdrawing because of whatever's going on with her. Um, you know, she claimed exhaustion. Fans are claiming she's injured. There's all sorts of stories. Her technique is also clearly going. She's clearly growing. Uh, she's had tape on the knees, which could indicate knee pain. It could indicate growth causing it. Um, her skating has gotten hunchier and hunchier throughout the season, throughout the year. So, but you have to think for Evgenia Medvedeva, it's not looking good. And maybe she can have an outside shot to Worlds if someone doesn't do well at Europeans and they have some sort of a skate off at a Russian Cup before. But Jonathan, what's your take on her performance here? We saw a new short program by Misha Gee, uh, to Tosca. It seemed much here, better for her. Yes, I think, um, you know, it's one of those things, we see her becoming a young woman and taking ownership off the ice, mm -hmm. right? And so there becomes this thing that a lot of choreographers want to mimic what's happening in real life on the ice mm -hmm. in this instance. I think that's why someone like Sandra and the mm -hmm. team over there were like, give her this coming of age kind of more womanly piece. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, I think her skating soul is more gravitas than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this kind of like profound music actually does, it's easier for her to emote and mm -hmm. respond to. So I thought that was a great choice. Um, now, remember in the beginning of the season, they said, oh, she was having trouble in the very first competition or so, remembering where she was in the choreography. There was much to remember, all of these things going on. And I felt a couple of times in the short, I felt like she was a little bit like, wait, what, what now? Because this is relatively new, I think. And I, I don't know. It seemed like it was skating her a bit, which could just be that the piece is new. Also, in that the music started, like, a second or two, I think, before she was really ready. If you saw beforehand, her breath was still very high and in, in her the chest short? and shoulders. In the short. I was looking and at the I, eyes, so I didn't even notice. Yeah. Okay. And I was here. 
I was okay. here because she was still a little like she got into her spot and she was he, not heaving, but she was like breathing it out. And then the music started when I felt like she had just a couple more seconds to chill out. The reason this short, um, the technical snafus in the short don't concern me like they might concern someone else is because we saw clean practices. So I don't think that this is like a lost cause, a total nightmare. I think this was a, she's putting it together because of the practices being clean. I actually feel more confident than less confident um, in what she does moving forward. Right? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. You know, Doug Hall was obviously coughing, panicking. I haven't heard from Brian, you know, like. Yeah. And he was saying that she looked rough when he first saw her over the summer. And you know, she, whatever injuries she had, she had really lost her jumping, you know, and that's, you know, the, some of the changes that they made were out of necessity. And I know some people think it's like an insult to a Terry, but the jumps were gone, you know, whatever. Yeah, and it was clear from a Terry also that something was going to have to change, which is why everyone got huffy about the comment when a Terry, like, maybe the time has come and gone. Yeah. Like, because no matter what happened, even if she stayed, this work was going to have to have been done regardless. So she has a blunt way of saying things. Like, did you notice when um, when Coaster Naya gets off the ice, she said something like, well, well, I'm here, I'm here. You're like, she did a good job or something. And she was like, yeah, and you just lost half a point, even though she obviously lost more points than that. But like, right. she just like said it like bluntly as they walked away, like to the kiss and cry. That microphone was everything, by the way. It was it was fabulous, yeah. So I was paying attention to Yevgenia's eyes, and I know that Brian's camp said that she was doing well, and we played along, but I did not think that she was psychologically ready for the Russian Nationals based on the season that she's had. You, it's like, how many clean programs and clean performances do you need in the tank before you're ready to the next step? If you haven't mastered doing clean on the Grand Prix, you're not ready to be clean at Nationals. It's very rare that someone can do that, especially when she seems to have lost her confidence, reworking timing, reworking technique in the middle of it. And and the biggest thing to me is that she was always such a performer. And that's that's gone. Like that, especially in the free. And the free, she has to carry it. That music is awful. It's been a bad program all year. They've never changed it. That was a big... Like they should have known to change that after the after the test gate. You know? But I wonder, a part of me wonders if in the back of their head they knew it was a very real possibility that she may not make these teams this Brian year. Brian thought she was going to win Worlds this year. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Then I don't understand. <laughs> I just thought perhaps if they were like, we could, but it's just about getting out there at this juncture and we'll go back to the drawing board. I think that this, I think they probably Russia was... They did not Russia see was... this happen. They are been surprised. Okay. They really thought that okay. they could get her into gear, you know? Like, and I think they can. I just think it's uh, unrealistic for anyone to, to have done it under these circumstances this quickly. And I hope that actually in redeeming herself in the long, feeling the support from the crowd and winning, being the senior winning lady in the free, mm -hmm. at least kind of can mm -hmm. give a boost moving forward instead of feel like, oh, I couldn't even go to nationals and then let this like rumor mill and all of this stuff kind of get more and more out of control. So I think Brian's made mistakes as a coach this year. He's obviously had so much success with so many ladies. Um, one of the things is that we've talked about it before a little bit um, where he does let his skaters be a little bit sloppier than like a mm -hmm. Frank would be, right? And I think that Brian Though he had Kim Yunat, she came to him as a very pristine, clean skater. You know, like, he didn't have a lot of bad habits to have to clean up. But, you know, Daleman was always messy. Always messy. Wild. And they never really worked on it. And then they'd be like, well, she's not really his. And it's like, okay. Frank Carroll would be, like, trying to clean up everything. Um, and not that Frank or, is the person. Or that Frank distance. Is the perfect coach. Yeah. He would distance if that was not the case. And he's not you the know, perfect coach. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is there's, right. a, there's a different... Frank has a lot of experience, obviously, as coaching ladies. Like, I think in men's skating, you could land a quad and no one's going to care if Han Yu looks down at the ice because he just right. did four quads, a triple axle from the most stunning entrance that you've ever seen in your life in the second half, you know, from the back hydro blade. And it's amazing. And everyone forgets the things that are not perfect. Um, and they're like, how dare you say anything about Han Yu? You know, and... Um, but in ladies, you really have to be perfect and go for every single point. 
And with Vida... Especially in Russian, ladies. I am sorry. Even even a 14th place free skate finish that's a disaster would have been silver or bronze medal at the United States Championships and would have won in Canada. Yeah. I mean, it's a very different thing, especially tied in with all those juniors. You are not just competing against these senior women. This is a whole new ball game. So like, Doug Haw called me. He was like, Brian's upset that you're talking about Medvedeva spins. And I said, well, Doug Haw, it's true. And he's like, yeah, well, y you know, you can lead the horse to water. You can't make it drink. And it's like, well, I Well, you watched... can't make it drink everything so fast. <laughs> so, and I get it. And this is where the Russian point of view on this is like accurate in their perspective. It's like two truths. So in Russia, you're constantly in a group lesson. So they're stunned when they hear that Orser works with her for an hour a day. Like, that's kind of actually a lot for a coach to work with someone in North America. Like, North American skaters are expected to practice by themselves and work by themselves. That's why a lot of times Raphael will say, in America, the skater makes themselves and the coach assists. Right. Whereas in Russia, like, the coach makes you because they make all the decisions. They tell you what to work on. It's almost like you're in Marie France's ice dance school and they're like, for these 15 minutes, you're working on your dance spin. For this, you know, where they right. prescribe everything. And I have to say, when looking at Medvedeva against the other Russian ladies when they're doing their spins, every other girl from Sambo 70 got every single point possible on their spins. Like, not just the levels, they went for all of the GOE, they went for the positions, they went for the speed, the centering, you know, all of them. Zagitova bombed that program and the spins were still and amazing. And nailed the spins. Yeah, re truly, yeah. And Canada's a more laid-back culture. Even though there's a lot of great skating happening at the cricket club, they are very jump, 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 organized. You know, Hanyu's always doing the quads. He works on his spins himself. That's a personal thing. Motivated Hobby thing, would be yeah. maybe okay on the spins. You know, certainly not amazing. Or the And even with Mavito, she has the skating skills to work on. She has the footwork. I really think that if she's to continue... They have to bring more people in, and like she doesn't work with Gislaine, and I've Gislaine, you know, Gislaine's worked with all of Brian's other top people, and I know that that's like a tense situation. Perhaps there's you know egos. Gislaine is becoming a sought after technician, wanting a lot more credit. But you have to kind of look at it and be like, well, you have a skater here who wants to be number one of the world, and she wants to be number one of the world. You have to have a better program than that tango that David did for her. And it's not anything about David. He's a very talented choreographer. This program was just flat. And if you couldn't see that the program was flat, then I'm wondering, like, what are you not looking at? You know, like, and then you're wondering, like, right. are you just, is everyone just collectively blowing smoke up each other's butt? Well, that's, but that's why I'm really convinced the, the if she continues, which mm -hmm. I believe she will, I, I think that the real testament is in the next Yes. The next two programs. I think that this that is good for her, honestly. That she, if she is, if she really wants to compete, this is the best thing that could have happened for her. We said this a couple, you know, months ago. People couldn't believe what we were saying it, but a couple shows ago. But I really think she needs to work, like on basics. On she needs to work on her basic skating, her stroking. She did get in the nines here compared to juniors. But I think that Costa Naya is a better component skater than she is. And I think that well, she Well, then needs... almost most ever. Yeah, well, like... if you're Evgenia Medvedeva and you know that you're very unlikely to ever do quadruple jumps, maybe a quad sal, but it's very iffy, I think she needs to work on the quad for over the summer and she needs to work on all those combinations. And, like, the, the Lutz Flutz is, like, it's good as it's going to be. I think that you need to work on your extension, your posture, your skating just your deportment, how you look on the ice, not just a Tracy Edge class. We're talking like ballerina, working shoulders all the time. She needs to come out there and look like she's the Katarina Vitt of the ice. Like she is the, because she's not going to do more quads than Trusova. So she needs to make up her points by being the grand dame of skating. But see, isn't it interesting, Dave, because if, if you take, you're, you're not looking at the program right now. You are just looking at the scores mm -hmm. according to the sheets and according to what the judges do for her. That's not where they're worried about her. She's she is literally because they haven't I seen agree a with you like that in Russia, you know, in a long time. I, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, I'm 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 agreeing with you that I would like to see her develop the craft. But on a nuts and bolts paper and score situation, they still give her the PCS, whether it's earned or not. And then it's really the technical thing that's that's limiting her. Oh, Jonathan, they need to give her obviously it has to be a Russian composer because you know how they are. They need to give I, her rock modern off right? piano concerto number two and have right. it just be like and they'll be like, oh, Zdilna. Gross, you know, like, Tarasa yeah, thanking exactly. the heavens, like, she needs to be right. wearing, like, navy blue, this, like, flowy dress, like, 
with, yeah. you know, get rid of the Adia skates, like just like the really world class look that she needs to look. And take and take the time to do it. In my opinion, I would say start making the programs now and be completely unrushed, sure. non anxious about trying to pump something out in the immediate instead of just waiting until you join us next season, you know? Yeah. I think it's just it needs to, there's a lot that needs to be worked on. Um, but I think that there's a lot that's been, the Sao Cal loop was very impressive and a very, uh, honestly, I like it a lot better than her um, triple toes, even though that was so successful when she was tinier in the Salma right. 70 school. I think it's, the loop looks like a really good jump for her, you know, like on the back end of a combo. Uh, right. I think as she learns to jump more with her legs, that the Sao Cal loop is a really good option, way, option for yeah. her. Um, to do, and I think that it's, you know, there's a lot, I don't think that she should give up. I think that she should put, look, they said it was gonna take two years, they need to own their words. I'm wondering right. if the mother will pull her back into Russia. Well, see, that's the thing, based on the support that was given, based on the redeeming free skate, even though it wasn't what she really wanted, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like maybe she's bought herself time in public favor in Russia. Do you know what I mean? But that, has that kind she of... bought the mom time? Well, I see. I, I don't know about the mom at all. But the, I don't know. I, I hope she gives it another year because I feel that would be the real testament to the work that's done now. I mean, I think it's very telling that... Well, there are a couple things that concern me. When she got off the ice in the short program, the fact that she didn't know that that was a single toe and that she asked Brian during the program just seems to me like something's not clicking. Like, when that well, because I think she didn't quite leave the the ground, leave the ice, right? So she was like, "Did it count more as a turn? Could I have because a single I, toe isn't a I thing? Get, could I have added the it?" Ice. It looked to me like yeah. she left the ice, and it looked to me like yeah. she didn't want to believe that she had left the ice. Yeah, um, but she's someone in the past and the way it says because she's done we've seen her miss she used to do you know the opening triple triple combination we've seen her leave it out and then add it later and it just seems like that's not as routine you know and we even saw right. that she you know would leave out the spins in the practice or leave out part of the program like that's just like something and i know that brian has his way of peaking but it just looks a little bit different apparently in her other school when they skate every day and we saw a little bit in the documentary a terry scores them you know like the goe yeah. on everything every single day so it's just you know that level of focus and attention i think needs to be the intensity needs to be revved up a little bit you know then yeah i think when you go from that to like this new canadian like feel good like we're gonna work hard but like not one in the is, same one yeah. is better for the soul yeah and one is better for the result and yeah. which are you looking for at this juncture and, and yeah. you know i think many people probably say of course i want the result but really the the cost of it is too great but then and she needs would... to look within herself and be like okay was i working on the the posture was i working on the spins enough was i working on this enough and then that that's where i think that you got yeah and also yeah. i think with brian like I was watching him a lot to see how, because he often seems to have like a more relaxed energy, but he looked nervous in both programs when she was skating. And I don't think that that's helpful to someone who's going into the lion's den at nationals. And like, that's when you even, like even Frank would be like, do your program, you know, like, or depending on what yeah. the skater needs, you know, right. or you watch Tarasova, you know, be like, duh. And that's when Suzanne is gonna be like, you are the best, you know, in the country, yeah. and you need to go show it, you know? Like, yeah. That. But when, the, when there becomes that, but Frank was about, like, the student, and mm -hmm. Brian in this situation undoubtedly has a lot being he, reflected on he's him. Taking and that's too much. Tough. Because, well, the Russians are playing him too. In the yes, media, but correct. Calling him the homosexual Canadian coach, you know, like all of yeah. it, you know? Um, but he's taking it too much to heart in his own ego he's has had all of these wins at the olympics and the worlds and right. like but yeah. there because there comes that point when you can tell you're on shaky ground and then he starts to question everything and Look, then the carlo whole... didn't win every gold yeah. medal either neither did our friend yuta yeah. mueller so you know yeah, exactly this... but uh, just in the 80s she did <laughs> for the girls <laughs> great what? documentary i finally watched it i absolutely loved it what was your favorite moment um, you know, hearing from Annette and Jan Hoffman, because you, you often hear from Katerina and you heard a little bit from Gabby Seifert in the um, 30s. Gabby Seifert, yes. Yeah, so 
I, but they went there a lot of time. I, it was a, I loved it. They I blew no loved. smoke. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh, I love that they talk about the the surtitles did a little. The oh. surtitles denied a little bit some of the edge that was being spoken because I'd be like, oh, that's not quite what that means. But okay, which, which, which point? Which one? I Just in to... general, they sugarcoated and like uh, made things a bit more general in. Because um, Mike in, in noticed the, that too. He was like, it seems like the Germans use a lot of words to say a sentence, and because like yeah, it would be they like were definitely consolidating. Yeah. Um, and, and, and nothing like profound, but it just kind of gave you a different mood when you listen to the spoken word instead of the the surtitles. But well, whatever. You know, I, I watch and I'm studying their <laughs> essences with each other. And like, I love when Gabby is like, oh, with mama and me, yes. You know, like, <laughs> exactly. yes, that was a fight. You know, like, so you just hated they, all of her husbands, basically, they right? Interviewed that young Austrian skater, and he was like, we were in love and we just weren't allowed. And I was like, wow, that's an interview that's happening right now. I but love we're... how Utah has such like a straight face, even when they're making jokes with her. She's still yeah. like so stern. I don't know if like that's her way of being funny or what, but they're uh, saying like she's like young, was allowed to have two pieces of cake, and I would get an apple. And she was <laughs> like, Well, that's healthy. She no, she yeah, she was literally like gesund. She literally was just like health. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like so funny. It's very, very funny. Oh so. my god. I loved it. I have to say, I really liked Evelyn Grossman. I thought she had a really nice energy. I know that she was, like, not the most talented skater, but I loved how she was like, yeah, well, Yuta took me to her house, and she made me an apple pie. Let me just tell you that, like... (laughs) (laughs) An apple's an apple, right? And I love how Katerina was like, I thought that that hand slap was our thing. You know, like, she... (laughs) I forgot that that there were other students besides me. Exactly. And and you don't often hear from Annette Putsch, and she seemed delightful in in the documentary. I I sent the documentary to Linda, and she enjoyed it. And I sent it to her, and I thought, I was like... Well, Linda always said she never had a problem with with Annette. Annette. And I said, yeah. you know, I didn't think this would upset you, but like, you know, she seems like a nice person, you know, and the whole, you, you know, the whole thing was great. But, you know, it broke my heart because every footage they played of oh, Annette Linda winning looked. that world. And, and you saw, I was like, oh, Linda, I see oh, you. Oh, that program was so god far. awful. Even in the, even in the replay when Annette would be skating, it was like, oh dear, the Frau technique. Like, exactly. without the pizzazz, is like, right. she really doesn't have the pizzazz. And you to even said it, she'd be like... She was a very concentrated skater. <laughs> like, you, you know, know who I want you to Mueller to coach is uh, Paulina Tsurtskaya. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they would be a match. <laughs> I'm worried it's over for her. I'm afraid it is too, but she still has that inherent spring in those uh, takeoffs, and it's so exciting. And even when I went back and looked, because I saw how low she had placed in the short program, I was like, oh, this must have been a rough one. And I know that they didn't give her credit on the double axle, and they cited the edge on the flip or something. But I was still like, again, this is a gold medal winning performance in, the, in North America. Mm-hmm. It's you just know? the rotation, and, too, when you watch her and all of that. Yeah. And your girl, Sotskova. It looks like... Oh, it, I, you know, we're, we had a breakup. I can't anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> she had a breakup with skating, it looked like, this weekend. It was done with her. Or more like skating's having a breakup with her. <laughs> yeah, oh it's, a, I think, you know, in this kind of field, that is just too tough. I too watched tough. the YouTube Mueller documentary. I wound up calling my coach, and I was like, Natasha, how are you doing? You know, like, you need to watch. So she, oh my God, we talked all about the Russian national... Dave, oh my, oh my God, you know, I don't like it. I don't like it how Medvedeva speak in, in the press. You know, maybe English different, but she's like a bad actress, bad actress. You know, like... <laughs> okay, amazing. I was like, oh my God. Like, she's really giving us all of the, the Pravda about um, okay, okay. skating. And she was like, you know, absolutely. Absol- you know, what, Arthur, he changed technique. Why he changed? She's two-time world champion. What? She bad? And I was like... This is my, this is my argument. It's just I was like, like oh, Natasha, you that, always were better missing. for the skating skills. You yeah, always were exactly. better for the skating skills, Natasha. <laughs> the champ's okay. not so much. Okay, it was okay. okay. It, but she's hysterical. But yes, she sit and watch. But she did fill me in. When I asked her why Tarasova and doesn't like a Terry because... She, um, and a couple of her viewers had like messaged this a couple of times, and I wonder if this is in the Russian press. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get sued. Um, but w- there's a whole thing about what that about Tarasova and Tuberitsa, and you know, because Tuberitsa was really her student, was Tarasova's student in ice dance for like a year, but that's not the reason why Tuberitsa is the way she is as a coach. 
So she was coached by Edouard Pline, who was Oksana Bayul's coach during the drunk years on the, the, the World Pro. Remember when mm-hmm. she like was doing oh, yeah. the Chicago program with the hat right. and it was Sarah Kawahara? She was working with him and he was known in Massachusetts as being like a real tough uh, Russian coach who um, was like a drill sergeant, like nasty, but he coached a lot of those um, 80s ladies that Peggy Fleming enjoyed so much. So Okay. <clears throat> she comes by it honestly in her approach. So uh, okay, yeah. Well, that's what you would do. Is what was modeled. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was just a little. There's some. So anyway, the thing with Tudbaritsa is there's something about with her and Buyadova that goes on. Uh, that's a much bigger uh, rivalry than um, them just having rival skaters. It like has right. to do with like their there's personal stuff between them literally stuff from the 80s is coming up still stuff and and 90s and 90s too with tuberita and like all of it and uh yeah so there's like a lot of loggerheads there that's very fascinating to watch so i'm it got so much more interesting uh i have to say i bet i bet (laughs) i'm just like wondering and like but they it's funny when russians say like rumors natasha will be like I don't know if it's just like the blah blah or you know what, but you know, let me tell you about Buyanova and Tuberitsa and husband and you know, you're like, okay, got it. So yeah, okay, got it. So, loved it because you can see that Buyanova always works with Tarasova, and they are very. But Natasha right. really thinks that Tarasova played a. I guess there's a subplot that maybe Tarasova played a role in helping guide Medvedeva get to Orser. Like that, there's something how she did her magical ways to guide this made a connection yeah yeah so hmm. Hmm, it's all the plot thickens hmm. so hmm. she certainly yeah. seems invested in that uh in- well and this is a different uh the commentating of russia seems a bit more like the throwback commentating scott yeah. hamilton did nothing but root for everyone That's and true. johnny and, Ch- and well but in that not the johnny gay skaters and- Correct. Well, yeah, he had to put them in their place. But the Johnny and Tara's are about Johnny and Tara. Mm-hmm. Dick and Peggy were a little bit about they also used their power for good and created fans. In their fans. Own way. Part of what was so magical about the Rudy Galindo win in 96 was Dave Button practically flying out of his seat. Like, that's a part of it. Showing us, being like, look at this. This is why we're supposed to love this skater. And then you as the viewer get on board and it's a bit of a PR thing, although I believe Dick Button really believed all of those things too, but you can steer the way things are viewed. And you see Tarasova really trying to lobby for people she's trying to promote. I love when she thanks the skaters, like the pairs, when she yeah. thanks them for their beautiful performance. When someone does well, some yeah. of the years she's done it, at Russia, and it's she's the best. When she's quiet and then she like loses her, I mean, obviously cough too, and she was crying inconsolably and like yeah. putting on all the theater. I mean, this is why Russian Nationals is better than the Real Housewives that I saw last night at the Wellmont yeah, Theater. Okay. Uh, this is <laughs> better than Countess Luann and Bethany. But this, okay. Tarasova, Tudberitsa, like Brianna, they are the best. Julie, yeah. you know. It's a real kind of culture of skating that then they invite the public into through the commentary, and that does not happen for no. us. Our, our, they want to draw you into what outfits they're wearing in the booth instead of what the skating community is and what kind of camps exist and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about Zagitova. So she was um, leading after the short program. You could see in the warm-ups that she was... Again, as she has, and I know that there's talk about what her injury was, the Grand Prix final. I don't know how serious that was. There are rumors she got an MRI. I mean, obviously, there is, there's something going on with her. She's also growing. There's a lot. Her technique has been going for a while. Um, we've seen glimpses of this in every competition. I think there's a lot happening with her. She talked about being exhausted here from the Grand Prix final to nationals, but she did choose to compete. She probably didn't have to. She could have gotten a bye. Um, right. And I think you look at the whole situation... So you could see in the practices that she hunches a lot. And we've noticed that, that the Lutz loop, which used to be such a nailed Zdilana combination for her, is now she has to really use her body to torque that loop position instead of just landing and being in position. And you see right. her use her whole body to torque it on a lot of Well, it does seem like it's like lands and 
up and lands it like and in it like collapse moves. and then has to unfold yes. herself which i would imagine is not only painful but outrageously difficult and bad for the back by the way yeah with the yeah. force that you're taking um, right but so you look at how she's not as consistent as she used to be last year and you can really see on like the it's that's not just like bad fortune like there's stuff going on in her mechanics it's like why right. She's often well, and some, out of position. Something about the Carmen in particular was, you know, you could see an unsteadiness and inability to find her blade to grab it sometimes and inability to, it, it was all off kilter. And it's that thing I almost felt like inside of her boots, <laughs> this is not what was happening. But the uneasiness gave the illusion that she wasn't even flat on her foot with inside the boot, that she kept like moving around because you, I, I lacked a feeling of anchor in her skating. Well, and that's why her, she's... She's using her body more to try to force the jumps. I mean, this is a skater who I don't expect to see at the top level in a year. I mean, this is, you know, someone who's really... The struggling. energy's coming from the extremities instead of the core. And it's, yeah. it's you, see, you see her floundering. But then. she's right on schedule yeah. with Terry's yeah. skaters that we've seen. Uh, right. Yulia, the year after the Olympics, uh, even the Olympic year, it started to struggle and then it went... Right. Uh, Medvedeva started to struggle last year. She was injured, then she came back, then it went. Um, and it looks like it's Sagitiva's time. And right. that's kind of... And they're going to beat juniors next year. I noticed that Trusova jumps with her back a lot. If you watch on the quad takeoffs, she really twerks it a lot already. So we'll have to see there, you know, what happens. I think um, for Zagita, I feel for her because she clearly works very, very hard. You look at all the details mm -hmm. of her skating. Um, and she doesn't look like she has the complete... Um, emotional connection with the coaches. Like, like Danny does seem very invested in her, and it seems like he's worked with her a lot. He choreographed her programs. He seems like he spent a lot of time with her. When you see a Terry and her, there's there's always been a little bit of a she was like business, business. business. Yeah. You know, like she was coming up, and I don't think she, you know she had Medvedeva for so much longer, and then now she's like the one, and yet she's already like visibly looking over her shoulder at the next girls, and like I think Atari knows what's happening. So, but you know what's interesting is there's always those lessons that coaches will talk about. It, it happens in music too, with like voice teachers and things like that. Frank was like, mm -hmm. I was too close to mm -hmm. this student, and I learned I cannot, I cannot do that. Yeah. Um, and you saw. You saw her do that with Yevgenia, and then she created the thing that got in Medvedeva's way. So mm -hmm. I think that there's like, I wonder if her approach now is she got too close to some, and so she tries to keep others out also just as a coaching mechanism. Yeah. Because you even see with, with Trusova, like that there is, there's something there that of between Of course, her it has to be very exciting the relationship that they've built as they've done these new But I think she's yeah. trying to keep it at bay because inevitably when those coaches become too close, it mm -hmm. becomes to even in the in other interviews we have done, we have had many skaters talk about that when that turns and it be, it can become unhealthy, it can become to, there are times when the skater feels like they've not let down themselves or their country, but mm -hmm. the woman waiting there. Yeah. And, and, look, and then, she then who has are you skating such a, for? She has such a well-oiled machine in her rink that like, she can't protect this student to make this student not come up. Like, She had no control over the results here, and you could tell. Like, She has trained these girls to all execute. And yeah. the ones that step through the door in this moment, like she does, she's created monsters in the sense that, in the good way, like in defense that they're all like <laughs> can go out there and like an kill army, it on the ice. An yeah. army of amazingly consistent and you know aggressive, confident, competitive, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. skaters. And it takes one little mistake and you fall. You know that that podium. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The, I mean, those three girls, those three girls who are not eligible to compete at Europeans, like, it's insane, the level of that. Yes, of but that the thing that bothers me, and that Phil, like, I really think a lot about, like, the people that that cover skating a lot, like, as the journalist. Like, that's why I really like Vaitsehovskaya. I know that she's controversial in Russia, but at least I like that she was an athlete when she's talking so she can see some of this stuff happening. But, like, when Phil follows it he already makes the same errors again and again and again and it's like he obviously feels some sort of guilt for the role he played in building up gracie gold right and then tearing her down and building her up with like the gold meets gold and all of that bs that he was a big part of as she was the chicago girl and we saw him latch on to her as he right. had never with a student before 
But then, like, Phil's retired. He got a good buyout from the Chicago Tribune. He's still writing because he, like, enjoys it. And, like, good for him. But then, like, Phil, did you really need to write the Will Alyssa Liu win nationals? And he's been, like, on that, like, can't not stop himself, cannot help himself. You know what it is, it. Dave? And I was thinking about this because even as we talked about the film that only mm-hmm. was interested in truce of uh, and yeah. Sherbakova instead of Kostanaya. And it's because that's the easiest thing to understand. Yes, it is. That a Tanya shock. became so well known because it's easy to understand that a triple axle is a move, other people don't do it. In my opinion, it's why people are still utterly confused and misinformed about Suri Bonali because there's mm-hmm. a move that's so dangerous that it is illegal. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's like, well, no, you're missing. Are you watching the skating? Like, what are you talking? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this sensationalist, like, here's a move. Will she do it? And then the entire program becomes reduced. Same thing with Mirai. They jump on it because they must think it's easier for the public to understand. But you saw those two quad lutzes fail those same skaters so at the wrote, Junior Grand Prix. He, he and wrote something about, you know, oh, the two quad lutzes from the 14-year-olds at Russian Nationals. It's like, yeah, Phil, but why don't they have them at 16? You know, you know that too. You know, like, and he, but he's not connecting the dots and he's not doing that level of analysis and he's playing it very in the middle, you know, and it's like this. On the surface. It's yes. a very surface level very thing. Very surface, they, and but no one yeah. is digging. Jackie's not going to dig, you know, and like Ted, Ted is not digging. And you're like, but is the technique lasting? And then Ted is, goes, he's now defending a Terry on Twitter. Like he's her spokesperson when they were going after him for yeah. the injuries and the, for everything. And it's like, oh my goodness. Like this is, we're reaching bizarro world where everyone wants clickbait. Everyone wants like a million hits because the girls are doing the quads. And it's like, well. But what of, about the skating? I guess the whole point is like. What about the skating? What about like, the technique? What about the full blade assist? What about the flats? What about the fact that this is right. going to be here in two years? So anyway. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, I think when you look at Konstantinova, uh, she is did a, her job here. I find it very circular technique. I find it um, I'm surprised not memorable it, at all. Also, what it does is lets me know how much was Kolyada on himself. Mm-hmm. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Because at first, from that same kind of coaching team, mm-hmm. you wonder like, oh, will the same kind of issue, or will the same kind of attention be paid to her deportment and to her style? And it was not. It was. It was not offensive in any way. It was completely there, mm-hmm. and it was completely fine. But it kind of lacked that extra attention to detail that they seem to be giving to Kolyada's posture and Kolyada's skating skills. Or maybe he just came with that on his own. She reminds me of one of the girls that didn't have that extra little X factor that a Terry kind of pushed out of the rink because she didn't have time. You know, right. from last year to well, this year. I find her very similar to mm-hmm. Sophia that way. I find in many ways they they satisfy the same quota of a nice solid girl she's probably she shows up she kind of does her job now i think konstantinova has a lot to prove at europeans because it's her position i think and maybe that's why they do that but i think that she is i think that she's a more pleasing she's like pleasing but boring like i think that she's more pleasing than sumadurova but sumadurova inherently has as sloppy as all get out but she has this look at me thing like she's giving you a low quality performance but she's like doing it you know like yeah she... well, and the short is more i wanted to clarify something i said about her once in the past about her hands because i think the way they address her hands in the short is very smart mm-hmm. and then it's in that burlesque program that it kind of like mm-hmm. falls away but i think you know if the if the juniors weren't here mm-hmm. Konstantinova would have been your senior national championship mm-hmm. or a champion and they would have had to have sent her to all these things, but now they don't have to send her to anything, and I very much feel like she's on the cutting block for Elisabetta. Should Europeans not go, I think there's a lot of pressure on in Europeans for Konstantinova. I think that if either one, so Madurova, if uh, and it's also if the judges don't score them that highly, I think they're going to look at two things because they don't really have a lot of. I don't, I don't. We don't know if Costner's doing Europeans. Who knows what's going on in that situation? Um, but you look at the whole situation. You know, who knows if she'll be there if she's healthy, whatever. But. I don't see the other girls from Europe really being able to challenge them, but if no. they did, 
then there's a problem. But I think they're going to be looking at the scores and looking at the performance. And then maybe there would be a Russian Cup situation where you would then... I think if they're going to open the door to Tuktumisheva, they would open it for Divya and Vidava as well. I think that that would happen. See, it's just interesting because the body of work really does work in Elisabetta's favor. Yeah, because... but Elisabetta is like a consistent lower quality product. Like she can do a triple axel, yeah. but she's been in the hospital for so long. Like she just got out today that she was posting, she's lost a lot of training time and she's lost muscle, strength, she's lost strength, yeah. momentum. I mean, there's a lot to get back. And I think that she can do it, but it's, you know, it's going to take time. And then... Because she is not going to the Universiade or whatever, right? I don't or know. She I is. think she is. But okay. we'll have to see. I mean, look, they're going to look at those competitions and they're going to be comparing and making decisions. But it's just crazy that a bronze medal... Mm-hmm. after two other medals on the Grand Prix and then doing well at the Grand Prix final still guarantees you nothing in well, this market. I looked at the performance that I got my Marta Caroli hat on. And before this, I was considering Medvedeva in like the Nastia category for her comeback. I know that you referenced that a couple weeks ago. Marta was giving her until the last moment. If Nastia came out at trials and looked like she belonged at the Olympics on two events, they would have gone for she it. She would have gone for her even over Kyla Ross because of who she is and what she can do. But she wasn't there, you know, and there was right. nothing they could do. For Medvedeva, she almost did it. But for to me, even if she had been clean here, I would have thought that it would be iffy to take her because she didn't perform the way that we know right. that she can. They gave her nines. They didn't give her tens. But, like, t- to me, those nines were gifts. But, like, n- no one else was really having the performance, certainly not Konstantinova. But you look at it and you're like, she can do more. Uh, you know, like, yeah. this is not where it needs to be just yet. Like, she needs to look, like, Olympic ready to go. Right. And I think that if she could do that in two months, maybe. But they would need a new program. They should get her a new program probably now uh, for the long. But I would think, um, you know, with Tuktimisheva, you have to go with Sumadurva, right? Because she's done it all. She's been consistent all year. She's been, then you look at And it's like you said, you're like, you know, if things get iffy, she will do what she is supposed to do. Yeah, even here. I mean, she had like a single loop, I think, instead of a double loop, but it was fine. Like, the whole performance was fine for her. You know, like, Medvedeva did beat her with a fall. Um, Then you look at Konstantinova, you kind of have to take her based on, because she beat the other ones here for Europeans. And Tuk Dimitri's obviously in the hospital, so it makes sense not to name her to Europeans, so... I mean, they could have named her and made Somodorova the alternate, but we knew that she would have withdrawn, so they just kind of, like, right, got rid of the drama and did that whole thing. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, like, um, it'll keep things interesting over the next couple of months. It will make a very interesting European Championships. Yeah, because it's, it's in other yeah. trials at the same yeah. time. But I think if they do their job, and I don't think these girls have a lot of sparkle, but I think that they certainly have um, potential. But I, I believe that we will be in a skate-off situation because who kn- I think it'll be really interesting. I'm most curious of those. I kind of think we know what to expect from Konstantinova and from Samadurova, but I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with Zagitova. And I think that if Zagitova doesn't look like a world champion there, then they're going to start looking at do they have one of the other girls who has been a world champion, can she be back up to full strength? And I think they'll look at, do we have another ace in the hole to be competitive to fight for the medals? Because looking, we haven't talked about, we'll do Japan tomorrow, but uh, that's a whole other uh, competition and a situation. So right. I think right. we look at that. Now, looking at our favorite girls, Jonathan, I believe my daughter won, and there's been so much I know. Shade you called it her. so long ago. You called it right away with Shervakova. I really did. You know, um, <laughs> your girl is beautiful, and I love watching her as well. Um, I think I think a Terry made the right decision of which three girls to keep and which ones to push aside last year. Yeah. Um, I think she's very smart, and she made the she made the right calls and the, the tough calls. Um, I think this will be. I think time will show that this is a historical trio of junior skaters. Is. At the same time, this is remarkable. These are lifetime m- moments. These kinds of programs for these junior skaters, and the fact that they're all there together, it's like a total embarrassment of riches that made every junior event so th- a junior worlds is going to be off the hook with these girls and you know what i think they should do for junior worlds is danny g if you are listening i think <laughs> that you should go back to the program from last year because watch sherbakova skate it in the exhibition 
and look at her short program and what she's capable of, and it's such a better program than the Rondo Capriccioso that she performs here. It's just like so much costume, so much... Yeah. Mm, so much. Skating. Just it's so much. much. Yeah. And I think like And her... inherently, she has a light, airy, breezy quality and about musical. her skating. So to, so to put all that on her seems... She's not necessary. musical in a different way than Kostunaya is, but when you look at the short program when she kind of goes on her topic and hits every note on the music, and I was showing her the mm-hmm. Instagram story, she really nails every little beat of that music and hears it. And yes, yeah. she is very slight, and that makes people very nervous. She's already been injured, and I get that whole part of it. Um, she really went out and delivered here because I think that she was feeling after the last competition, the Russian Cup that got them ready for here, that she was behind the other two ladies. Remember, she was crying and had a rough short right. program, and she and she had a very tough Grand Prix final, and she came here and she nailed it. And I think that that shows that she's a fighter, too. These are three yeah. competitive girls that you cannot count out. They're down for, what, it, three she, weeks, you know? Yeah, and I love it. She does that entrance. I, is it into, I can't remember which jump it's into, where she does. she's flying across the ice on a diagonal, and she throws in, like, a waltz jump just as, like, a connecting step. And I was like, what, I wouldn't kill to do a waltz jump that well. I was like, even the waltz jump, you're just like, oh, my gosh. It's it, There's speed, there's, like, curvature to each line she's creating. It's, it's really, it's a really nice skater. And I don't know if she'll ever be Russian national champion again, but she will always have this week. So, and even even we saw her commentary was like, "Wow, I didn't expect it." And I did land my jumps, and my spins were terrible. I'm going to work on my spins, and I was like, "Oh only, my goodness!" She only really missed the one spin. That's what cracked me up is that she on the the back entrance to the camel kind of caught a hook and didn't you know center yeah. it, and that she fought the spin and she got through. But it's amazing how in a Terry's camp, I'm sure that was a. They're just fired that way. Yeah. I was like, gosh, I hope at least for a night you can just look around and enjoy it for a moment. <laughs> yeah. well, she knew what to say to make a Terry please with her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but how about Costa Naya? If not for that fall on the footwork, I mean, this could have been her week. You look at what a wonderful performance she had here. I mean, this was really. And when she fall, when she, when she followed, when she fell, I was like, oh gosh, I, I hope she's not upset. I hope, and she did seem to be a little bit lighter about it than she was when she made silly errors earlier in the season. But holy cow, when she flips her handbags in those landing position, and then she just gives it a hand like punctuation, it's just incredible, like next level stuff. Like when Sherbakova lands, um, certain jumps her leg is like perfectly parallel to the ice and it looks very like look i am this that's is why i said that she had a sasha quality to her you know? exactly but like kostanai is like adding that extra touch of flair like she creates She's more it. Of a michelle kostanai yeah you yeah know? Yeah, there's something soft and sweeping about it. And she's got the and, skating skills, and she's got the the double axle from, you know, what she arrived with, and she has those qualities. And the entry, the entry to the um, the combo in the short program, it's some of the most beautiful yet exciting attack mm-hmm. like I I have ever seen. But you, like you say, that double axle is out of nowhere compared to a lot of all the other girls there. It's clear whoever taught her that thing. Mm-hmm did it absolutely right from the ground up. It's gorgeous to watch. And I wonder why we haven't seen the triple axel yet. We saw it, you know, clean. We haven't seen it in practice since. I'm very curious, you know, what's going on with that and why that hasn't been in our program. I'm sure that they've talked about it, you know, or put it right. in because they pushed the content with the other girls. So it's probably maybe it's not super consistent yet. But, yeah, you know, she. Well, I, don't... I don't think she needs it right now. It depends, like, what are the other girls going to do? They still look, she looks much more grown up and adult than the other two do and i think that her body will be okay for the long run and her technique looks like it's it looks much more sustainable yeah yeah and and she did come with basics and mechanics from another coach you know yeah so and that stays those pcs aren't going anywhere you know what i mean she's not she's not benefiting from being clean exclusively you know she really is providing a quality that's next level and i wonder in those like kind of step Mm-hmm. moments when she trips and things like that um i was like do you even know what's happening and or do you have to probably see the replay for her to something be like, like that can that? be a really weird error your body can yeah. be a little it can be the, the slightest thing um 
I think the funny thing that we saw, though, is that it, in the interview with Ted, did you notice that... Okay, so leading up to this... Wait, wait. It, leading up to this before, like, Trusova was clearly, like, the one that Atari was, like, focused on and, like, was her girl, right? And then we see the the Japanese piece where, Atari, like, they're talking about the two girls from Atari's rink and Kostunai is not there. But because Kostunai won the Grand Prix final, that's the one, the only one that Atari talked about by name. She was like... She is an angel, an angel. She, I see it, you know. And you're like, okay, we see what you're like. This is Karoli yeah. levels of like BS yeah. for the media. I love it. You, you win, know. you were, you are in love. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You are now the favorite for two minutes. Um, yeah. Loved it. So amazing. Uh, um, I think for Trusova. I think you can see that without the jumps, the program is not there. Especially in the free. The free is hard to get through, but. The yeah. short, she does have the greatest spins I think I've ever seen. And when she just gets a center in like a back scratch or she just, no, she can like. Well, and that cantilever entrance in the in the short program into the camel spin, like there's some cool stuff they get her to do. So one of the earlier spins was just a little bit like made me she nervous. She but... understands the center, like yeah. pole of her body. <laughs> better yeah. than anyone I've ever seen, I think, in the sport. And when she hits the entrance just right, she can get into that backspin position and do it. And I think air. that's the key to making her seem more musical. She has timing. The combo is landed exactly perfect with the music. But she does have a bit of that, I was told to do this move. Well, she's a very stiff back that doesn't yeah. bend to music. or And she doesn't... In, in, naturally hear music and move her body in expression like there's no like yeah so i feel like if you choreograph it by merely timing elements right that could be her in because she mm -hmm. can do that very well yeah um and it and it does create a sense of listening to the music of being cohesive with the program mm -hmm. i think that would be the trick for them is something geometric and time a bit benoit approach quite honestly yeah um now moving along to the men what did you think about Kovtun? I mean, obviously a great performance here. It was not as clean as we were all pretending that he performed. Um, it was very well, good. And he had... As Atiri mentioned, girls are better. Girls are better. Why are we... And, it's, and you look at these nationals and you're like, well, you're not wrong, honey. <laughs> he was, like, I think he had the light, the, the verve back in his skating. He had the confidence. When he missed the jumps, they were way off, but... A tilt, like, I was like, your whole body is parallel to the ice. Yeah. I've never seen a tilt like that. Well, that's what I was also going to ask you about um, Yevgenia's double axle in the short. It looked like she went up tilted and, like, overcorrected the tilt, I thought. Because she went up this way and then was like, oh, I need to correct this tilt. I'll just That had to do with the takeoff it. with, like the push leg and the kick leg that was off. You don't and think that was her correcting it in the air? Or you she think did she try was... to correct it, but she was off from the beginning when she went up. Yeah. You know? And then I thought she almost got herself off in the opposite direction by the time it was a she... Mess. Okay. Yeah, like, that was unfortunate. But... So... Uh... But Compton, Compton reminds me a bit of when Javier would hit mm -hmm. some of those, those quad sows, they were just beautiful. Mm -hmm. That you couldn't, you know... It's especially with Kavtun, you don't always know if it's there, but when it's there, his arc and height and trajectory of those was exquisite. Both mm -hmm. quads, I thought, in the um, short, but really the quad sows in the in the long were really, really beautiful. He fell on the toe, but um, when he got it right, it was just a delightful thing that didn't rely solely on rotation, but also on height, height and distance. And did you notice the costume in the free? Both costumes are trying to help. It was a bit like upholstery. But it was they're a trying bit of upholstery to, that created an openness. They're trying to, because we've often talked about his posture before, being very hunched forward, like a Zagitova or Medvedeva. And they're really trying to, like, get, you know, work the shoulders, make it a part of the costume, they, make it a part of the performance. It worked. Yeah. It totally worked. And then even if you feel it, there was just such an open, he was skating enormously tall and enormously broad. And yeah. I think that is exactly right. I think that yeah. helped it immensely. And come on, that takes some guts yeah. for to skate to the same music as your competitor. The Battle However, of the Carmens, man. But, but he was doing a bit of a Katarina cut, like, <laughs> I know that like you don't necessarily have to n avoid arias sung by the woman, but he was skating to 
Carmen, the woman's music a lot of the time and kind of being like seductive and slinky with it. And I was like, but that's, I mean, I, that I, it made me feel weird. Have you ever looked you know? at Kavtun and thought that he's actually seen and studied the opera, Carmen? No, but I thought maybe his, his um, whoever's putting together his music. We know his Have his you watched Russian skating the last rap. 15 years? It looks like everyone who used to know those things has died. So I think that like... Except Kolyada. Kolyada does a great cut of it. He does. And but... Zueva would know, but she's not in Russia anymore. It seems like a lot of the, the people with class left and we now have like the... The Udell of Russia, the the Ron Luddingtons <laughs> leading the show with the Carruthers. Um, anyway, I mean, so uh, <laughs> you're getting the reference. If you have you ever watched like the eight gotcha. Olympics with who our parent dance teams were from Delaware, you could, you'll get it. Um, anyway, uh, there's a kind of blue collar quality. So um, going to cough tune. Let's go. Kolyada. I'm thinking. Uh, I mean, I think he needs to make a big, big change or. It's over. I mean, I think... Because the material is incredible. The material the is incredible. The technical knowledge is there. Yeah. So, and some of these, like, even um, that triple Lutz he did in the free, mm -hmm. he was holding that edge and then just kind of let it go. Actually, so I was intrigued by the GOEs because he had some negative fives, some negative threes, because I was like, he was holding that really nice edge and then kind of let it go in a mm -hmm. bit of a... Did you just quit? I, I can't quite figure it out. And there were so many triple-double combinations that we've seen throughout the right. year instead of triple-triple. I mean, here, the mistakes just added up and up and up. And you could tell from the very first moment of his program that he wasn't going to do it. You know, yeah. like you could just tell. And the judges tried. The, yeah. the judges were really trying to help kind of behind the scenes there, and it, he just made it too difficult. The other one who, I don't know what happened, but... Um, your boy Aliyev, um, just... It's because I like him, all these like beautiful, sensitive, vulnerable artists that just make me feel all the things. I can guarantee they can't like hold it together. It's some like Russian his... Jeremy Abbott or something. Some of his falls were just like, oh God, you know. Yeah. And I that... like his skating. I'm like, yeah. there's a lack of oxygen in my apartment. I feel like, sorry. I'm like, um, <laughs> and also watching 8 million Russian programs, like in this tight element, like it's not that we put out the video that fast. It means we actually have to watch all these videos that, like in real at, time while we're working. So I was at Countess Luann last night too. And that was a, a sight. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Now, the thing I will say about Aliyev is it's interesting because even though it seems cheesy because he is doing the running thing, which isn't my favorite, but he does it with such conviction. But the camera keeps catching it from behind him. They got it from the front this time. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they got it from behind they, in the beginning of the program. Okay. At the end, they revisit yeah. it. And uh, then also out of nowhere, he just did a triple flip. Do you remember when Suri Bonali would just like stand and then do a double axle to start those programs yes. for a while in the 90s? It you felt it. a little bit... It felt a little bit like that. I was like, I, I was unsure why they decided to do that. That's a change from what he was doing on the Grand Prix because he did this beautiful choreographic introduction before. And now it was just like running, which was not my m most favorite part. And then just launched right into it. So I couldn't quite figure that out. It maybe didn't help like they had hoped, but I'm still hopeful. I'll still watch it because even with the mistakes, I don't care. No, Samarin, uh, I think he... He had some mistakes, but he kind of did the most uh, what he did. Natasha loves him. And I was like, oh, God, I paid you too much money. Um, but uh, <laughs> I just that's a lot, that whole thing. But he's, you know. But he, there is um, a straightness to his back sometimes yes. in the jumping and things like that. Which it helps. Uh, you know. Which does help the lack of other things that are going on. <laughs> and remember how when um, Poker Alaya had that, like, was that was his name Victor, the extra coach? Yes, the one that would be in Some the speedos on Instagram and doing the live story. Yes. Samarin has an extra coach too. Oh. I don't know. Notice. Go back and revisit. Some Does of he those have an Instagram too? I'm gonna look for it. Okay. What happened <laughs> to Victor? He still shows up sometimes, Victor. He does. So. But my my last thought on Kolyada is because he gets stuck in a little bit of that repeat of the music that da di da dum dum di da 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 da. That music comes back at the end of the opera, and it foreshadows when Carmen's about to be stabbed, and it does this like really scary, cool thing. I wish they would incorporate that because it would fit the same element, but be super cool and edgy at the end. Well, you Just should a... tell Raphael Arturin about it because I think that we need to send Koyada to him full time. So I think so. I think so. And I would like Raphael at Russian Nationals. I think he would add his. 
I think he belongs there. It seems unusual to me if, that that's not a more exchangeable kind of option for people. Yeah. Um, it was so funny. I was already getting a text from someone being like, do you think Medvedeva should go to Rafael? And it's like, well, she's already a year into the process with a new coach that we're going to send her to she Rafael. She should finish her antibiotics before yeah. she just throws them out and tries a new one, expecting a different response in just as short a period of time. Well, this is a, a fan who does a Ivy League um, uh, service for, you know, um, mothers who want to, overbearing mothers who want to get their kids into colleges. So you could tell he is just like <laughs> whipping that tiger mom thing around. Immediate results. Immediate results. Yeah. I did hear. I did hear the greatest story. Um, I won't use names because one of them is still competing in the U.S. But one skating mom gave another skating mom, both of the oh. Asian descent. Both gave one gave the other one in Colorado a um, an SAT prep book, being like, "I think your kid could use this." And like, <laughs> and my favorite skater is Brian Boitano. Same and, level of shade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, anyway. Meanwhile. I, meanwhile, in the in the pairs. It, Dave, yeah. watch pairs. Oh, I love it absolutely, absolutely. Teresa Morozov, perfect, perfect. Absolutely clean, clean. She's there. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. Um, so they did switch. Oh, my God. Tom Z's texting me as we're doing the show. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he really wants to talk about that new book he has out. We, we'll right. talk about it. Anyway, so... <laughs> oh, come on out. Like It's like a late night show. Maybe you can bring a spider monkey as well. <laughs> like I don't know what the Korean ranking competition is. Like Is it yeah. the Nationals? Is Ensu there? Right, exactly. Anyway, so when we go from... Uh, they went from the throw lots and they went back to the loop and the sow cow, but it worked for Taras Morozov. They were clean here. And it was beautiful. And it was still boring. And I don't know, like, why but are here's they so the... gray? Like, they're yeah. so... So here's the interesting thing. I think they were trying to infuse personality with pieces like Candyman or whatever yes. that ridiculousness was. So now they've taken away that kind of cringe element. There yeah. used to be a cringe element. Like in the short. So now... Yeah. For example, like the short. <laughs> so now in the free without a cringe element, we're just left with... Pleasant. Two things. It's like One, Sinitsina we, Katsalaba, pleasant and boring, but they're not as where attractive. Is, where is the personality? Where is the perspective and the point of view? But also you can at least appreciate that there is tremendous ice coverage. There Extension, is speed, deportment. And there is quality in, in the elements themselves, which mm -hmm. actually I had a hard time mm -hmm. appreciating in, in cringier programs. So it does do that, but it does leave you with a feeling of like, where is that magic? Where's the where's like the fairy dust magic? Now, I know <laughs> like, that they are sometimes an argumentative pair with one another. Apparently, um, apparently Ginger, uh, the Russian Sean Rabbit is a little bit of a diva. <laughs> apparently, Russian Sean Rabbit is known for being a yeller, okay. allegedly, okay. according see. to okay. other competitors in the pair event. It's okay, Tatiana that and Vlad are known for being a little a spice. Well, they should have a little more spice with each other then when they skate. Right. But um, like Mandy and Ingo, they really, they brought it. Um, right. These two should skate to Enya as well. I think that would work. But anyway, um, they just, she she doesn't perform. And it's like not just the color. Of her. Like her face is not relaxing and like expressing music. She's just vacant like yeah it's not fully engaged yeah no and he is not either he had a little bit of a check on his landing of the sow cow but otherwise it was a really good and yet they still got plus threes on it and i thought oh. that oh hey nationals how you doing <laughs> but they do have really beautiful lift positions and a nice quality and yes. it looks like they have improved with trenkov and i think taking out the throw lots was a smart wise why they don't need it this season quite no. frankly I know that's yeah. not ideal to not push yourselves just because you don't have to, but if they're clean. Um, they're more dangerous to Vanessa and Morgan because I agree. they do have the inherent. You're gonna give their throw another plus one or plus two, and you're gonna give this another plus one or plus two, and it starts to add up overall. Right. If right. they can be clean and consistent for the next three months. The, and also, I would love at least punch up your final pose. The final pose really left the free with like a wet. And Peter Chernyshev, it sounded like, did the program. Uh, I think it would look nice if they looked more like they enjoyed skating while they performed it, and maybe we could work on like 
her, I think she should maybe color her hair and do, wear like a warmer color dress that's not just so like washed out white and gray. It's like, something about her projection that's yeah. missing. And it's, it's, she's a beautiful girl. She has great positions, but it's just kind of there and like kind of looking side to side. And, and it's she's not even harsh looking and it doesn't allow for the softness of the program. And then the costumes kind of washed out and the music is so minimalist and it's just like a snoozy. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't provide you with that inequality. Sometimes we see with other skaters that we want to share with us more, and mm -hmm. she doesn't give us the out either, so it's somewhere lost in the middle. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it, you're right. If they just stay clean, mm -hmm. they're going to be much more dangerous. And when Zabiaco and Envert, I like them a lot as well. There's an inherent quality that I like about them. They're a little bit Gumby-ish. Like they've got these long limbs that don't seem to have the strength and... Um, I think Taras and Morozov have a lot more ballet training because when you are trained in ballet in the Russian technique from like the Vaganova school or the Bolshoi school and they focus on the turnout, it does something to your muscles where they develop in a very specific way, which is why Velozhizhar has a certain look, why um, right. Taras has a certain look to their legs and their body, like the way the muscles work on your legs. And Zabiako doesn't have that as much. You're, just, you're saying... Uh... Stolbova, Diet Stolbova doesn't have yeah. <laughs> that same kind of turnout. Yeah, that but it's, same but it kind literally of Literally, like cr the Russian training of that ballet does has an effect on the way your muscles develop, you know, and like the um, proportion with one another and the, the whole look of the line happens right. with the turnout from the hip. So, do you now as we talk about these kinds of inflated scores that happen at every country's nationals, do you find that then they are also more generous on the calling of the levels? Because yes, they were of getting, course. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because he, I just didn't know what was. Oh, Doug Hall wants us to let you know because we mentioned that he worked with Getty on her spins that she got all level four, and I was like, well, oh, who was okay. the caller, Doug? <laughs> okay. I mean, I didn't, I didn't study her levels on the spins either, so <laughs> the disconnect I get a little bit from the Zabiaco and Enbert is like, you know, when they go into their triple sows in the Twai Moi is they almost seem glacial going into it. Like, I think they lose all momentum. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're stuck. Like, I, I don't, are they hesitating? But they do it together and then it works. And Michael Shaley just... loves her. He loves Zabiaco. Interesting. I think okay. they have the same hair. Michael, come here for a second. <laughs> Michael. Oh, it's Michael Shanley's camera debut. Yeah, Michael Shanley, come on. Just say hello really quick. He's going to come on. He's not ready. Michael, we don't have a lot of time. I'm not going to edit this out. So I have to say the, who is your favorite pair skater? Who is it? Come tell Jonathan. It's just me. I, I like Morozov. <laughs> And <laughs> I thought you liked Zabiaco. Yeah, I like them You're too. saying the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's here watching. Okay. Your okay. moment is over. <laughs> You're like the other commentators who used to work with Tarasova. Oh my God, Natasha is so funny because one time she loves to watch Tarasova commentate, but she goes, but you know, Yagudin is there because he nods with whatever she says. He knows to just agree with her. And that's how you get the checks. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Natasha's okay funny because she checks. talks yeah. about Tarasova in the way that we all do, like a genius and a very smart woman. And she will also talk to her as like a coach of Russian junior skaters who will discuss okay. her as being like someone who will like steal your, um, steal your student, take all of the credit for it and just do some arms. And she'll be like, yes. And what did Tarasova really do with Klamova and Panamarenko? She'll be like, that right. was Alexieva. And uh, okay, <laughs> she was like, it. that was not her. Yeah, she was like, she well, and as happens so many times with these like Nina Mosiers or, you yeah. know, these other people that are like kind of faces and fronts of yeah. the... Yeah. Well, she's a genius front, anyway. And yeah. she did pick exactly. the music, and it was very her. So the choreography... But now, speaking of genius, I am obsessed with um, a little bit of Moskvina back into the scene with Boy, that boy and Kozlovsky. Yeah, I, I, it's like, finally... You're the only person who knows their names, by the way. Even well, some I... of their competitors would be like, you know the Moskvina team, Boykina, and... Um... Oh, oh. And I said, Natasha, what's the name of the third um, Russian team? Oh... 
I don't know. Uh, they working with Moskvina. Working with Moskvina help you know team. But now we've we've had two. Or I have seen them back to back now, and I'm just into it enough that I was like, "You're worth you're worth the time." You're so worth they're me. the team that no one from the U.S. has been able to beat all season, no matter what. Like the, and, they're doing some exciting stuff, and, and you know what? And it's, it's a boring. Much- it's a boring program, but they have inherent Masvina quality. You know? And there are little moments. There's okay, so they do. I think it was right after the twist, the lift that they do right after that. There's like a little Moscovina ingenuity in like she goes up and she turns around as like as she's like going into it. Like there's some little touches, some mm-hmm. little nuances of originality that I feel have so been missing from so many Paris teams. I'm, so to yeah. see that kind of creativity. Little little by little sneak in. I was like, more, more. I want to see something that's different and new. So I wonder, is it like a Nita Mosier or situation and like a, a Rita Wiener where like they come in and like make some adjustments and then like they leave and the other person, Vasilia was doing the day-to-day work. Like I wonder how much time is she in the rink and how much time is she... Suzanneing the situation. She loves that sport, though. Yes. I don't think she could ever leave the ice. I'm sure she's very as involved as she is able to be. Well, apparently, and Nina I, may have stepped back a little bit because she has a love situation with someone in, in the ISU. That's like what the scuttlebutt is. That she, look, she's allowed to have love in her life, you know. Of she's course, like, she is. Of course, she is. It's just a a plot turn I wasn't expecting. It's a, yeah. Look, there. It's a very small look. How many skaters is Annette Poach married to when you look at her, like, and all the East Germans? There's, there's not a lot of, you know, options in Chemnitz to, like, who exactly. we're going to marry. Exactly. You know? <laughs> we know who Ingo is, you know. Exactly. That would have been my choice. But, um, but I, I do will think... say this. I told that Aliona Sevchenko, I said, that Ingo may be a horse's ass, but he is still good looking. Damn. A good said, looking horse, yeah. <laughs> like, you... You have good taste in the men, you know. Yeah, exactly. Now, I do think it's probably going to be very easy for Boykova to eventually overtake Zabiaqua and Embert if they if they stay on this path. Now, his energy after the um, after their skate was a little unnerving to me, like a little reckless, okay. uh, over celebratory in an aggressive. Um, animalistic kind of way and then even after the kiss and cry when they realized they meddled he got up with a real like kind of unnerving uh wild energy <laughs> so so i don't know what things are like there behind the scene but we know if tomorrow is on the case she'll keep him in line yeah i i love her so if we could see more of her in the kiss and cry i would like her to commentate as well so oh yeah i was re-watching that show bolero because we're used to taras being a judge but did you ever watch the show in Russia, and if you haven't ever done this, you really need to go back. It was one of the greatest moments. It was during um, my blogging era, where they put the Russian pair and ice dancers with the prima ballerinas and had them dance on stage together. Oh. So I often on Instagram will um, will show um, this prima ballerina Evgenia Obratsova, who's of in one of the documentaries. And Gorgeous. She, well, she did this assassin's tango if you were like, da 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 you know, she did that with Maxim Stavitsky, and it will change your life if you see it. Um, okay. It was, and I think Moscovina was the judge on that show, so she was in okay. the head seat, do, okay. calling all of the shots, so we need more of her on television, but... And just a quick wrap up on my final pair situation, Daria and Dennis, who were fourth, mm-hmm. they were the ones with the triple flips, but mm-hmm. they were, it was like back to kind of like some sort of like 90s remix and they were like throwing cash and the music didn't make any sense. And the one I actually enjoyed a, a bit more. A Udell situation, if you will. Like for real, for yeah. real. Um, and then, but the Mishina and Galyamov, I'm, yeah. Galyam, Galyamov, um, they, I much preferred them Okay. Um, and their twist uh, was even more impressive, I think, than um, Tarasova and Morozov. So I think there is also some exciting stuff coming up mm-hmm. for us in Russian pairs, which is nice. I'm also very I excited that death. <laughs> but the Russian dance it continues because I we have heard so much whining, complaining, um, scuttlebutt about um, about how much Tarasova within Russia, how much she favors Stepanov and Bukin, and how much she's always pushing them, and how you know involved, and how you know all these teams are like they're being inflated. But they didn't win here, and they sure they didn't. didn't. 
And Julin is also known as a, remember, the thorn in Marie France's backside, and he's known as a political master as well. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that even with Ala, who is sometimes best friends with Tarasova and sometimes not, even with her as the referee here, although Helena Gordon Poltarek was not on the, I would have enjoyed if she made an appearance. Um, she's one of my favorite um, scandalous callers. Characters. But, uh, characters. <laughs> and she's like very beautiful too, um, which makes her even more deadly. Like that Polish, you know, those Polish women. Um, uh, <laughs> I... I thought, like, okay, what is going to happen? Like, is this going to be Stepan Mubukin's moment? And it looks like Russia has, like, gotten in line where they are, like... So here's... I looked so closely for this very reason, because it was all going to happen in PCS, because Stepanova and Bukin outscored them in in the technical base value and all those sorts of things in the free dance. Mm -hmm. So it really came down to a couple judges. A couple of judges did have the guts to put um, them first, mm -hmm. Bukin. Uh, I think yeah. it was Lolita and Vladislav I wrote down. Okay. Oh, no. I Excuse me. Lolita and Vladislav buried Bukin and yeah. Stepanova. So those are Julian judges yeah. lately. Let's let's memorize their names in the comments because we're going to have to pay who's at which competition. I've often thought about doing a tree so that we could see which judge is with which camp. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of like PCS favors. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very yeah. real in Ice Dance. It's a real thing. Because there because... are such things as Julin panels. There are Marie Franz panels. Look, we obviously love David Molina from France. We know which way he is going to go. Um, right. Typically, uh, we he has a certain thing. And it could be your aesthetic, what you raised, what you like. But it also... Of course. Yeah. In addition to some other factors. Actually, yeah. But the, these two, they were very, very close in PCS. A lot of scores, they made sure they were giving 10 mm -hmm. to Nikita. And then they were giving that 975. Like they kept them just out of they range on purpose. They it. But these two were unabashed and just gave them three three points below, or you know something something much more dramatic that really that really swayed it. Yeah. Well, they know that if if two of them do it together, you can really make an impact because they'll throw out the low. But if you have two right. bury them by three points, then you really know how to. You solidified it. Yeah, exactly. Because knowing that they were going to win the mark technically. So now I have to say, Stepanov and Bukin have really been making so many stupid little bit of errors in the in the rhythm dance and on the pattern once again when they do uh on key point one when we go to the inside edge for four she was out of position and like you usually had a hold and like she was like halfway like where she was supposed to be she was off balance at the end of the second um part of the pattern and i thought that that was really interesting that they were off they had also an extra rotation one of them on the twizzles i think it was she uh, who did um and it it just was sloppy little things they gave away and i find because they're but they sell it and yes. so i think it's very easy for a crowd to get behind and it's an enjoyable they have the better watch. music and she is but the when face. you really look at the substance there's still some things lacking in this team so it's not totally outrageous of course to me that they are in second but and their twizzles the sit spin twizzles you know they don't carry a lot of distance and sometimes it looks like are they twizzles or are they sit spins because at the well, end I of the free dance right it, I thought at the end of the free dance that's considered a choreographic move right. instead but like of when you, when you look at that sometimes their twizzle pattern isn't that much better you know like but, you watch some of this stuff but they are brilliant at masking it with uniformed finishes that give you a whoa kind of yeah. sensation until you go back and do it in slow-mo and watch the feet instead of the pizzazz yeah so I was trying to compare when I was, you know, watching to judge some, especially some of the finishing touches and why Sinitsin and Katsalapov are getting the points over them. And I have to say that um, Irina Zhuk, who coaches Stepanov and Mukin, did a lot of smart things where she will, because I know we talked about this the year that they both did the tango with the Caitlin Weaver type dress that was like falling mm -hmm. off in the red. I think it was two years ago. Um, where That's when he kept like dropping her and throwing yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they... You know, we talked about her posture and how her lifts are not pretty. And I think it was either it was Ben Augusto or Charlie who talked about it when they were commentating. So they now completely contort Stepanova's body where like one leg will be left and one leg will be right. And she'll be like sitting on him like she's riding a mechanical bull as she's twisting her body because they will do anything to keep you from realizing that she does not have a beautiful classical posture position in these lifts. Right. And she cannot hold her body in that way. She's a little bit of a Tara Kane. So they they will like twist her body and contort to make you like 
disguised Confused. as fact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you would maybe go plus two on the left, maybe a plus three, if you're being generous, but you would never go four or five. And when you watch Victoria, she does hit better positions in some of the lift movements, um, just the better finishing touches, and it's like a boring beauty. Like, there's not a lot of chemistry between but the core, them. But the core quality of the skating itself is over here, and it's very clear Victoria does excel mm -hmm. compared to Stepanova there, but it's in the selling and the flash that, which is interesting because I think Ilyanik and Katz and Nikita um, benefited from Flash. I wonder, Julian seems to really like Victoria, and I know he has a new wife, but I was like, wow, she seems like his type. Like, he loves a beautiful blonde girl, like, you know, like... Uh, she is a beautiful. Extension. They're both beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, but What was interesting for me was what was happening with Tiffany and Jonathan. <laughs> um, Tiffany Amber Thiessen and Jonathan Byer, obviously. So Tiffany Amber <laughs> Thiessen does have the greatest... Um, pointed toe in ice dance right now i have to say she is a real she is a real gem in this field yeah. i mean obviously less so in this particular performance which was like watching a train wreck but um the and i was i was talking to a choreographer who was like i think it's my favorite free dance of one of my favorite free dances of the year and i was so perplexed at first and then i went back to it and i really started watching it and it made me wonder about like how eliona was saying about benoit i wonder if the choreography is actually so innovative and so unique that it's actually beyond their capability at this time and they have had and, injuries and they don't skate the fastest of all of the teams yeah with the most power yeah and and I it, it made me appreciate because I was like now picture this but picture it performed at a higher level by a different team and I thought this is a very special program that took me a while to kind of get until I looked at it that way yeah I think it's interesting because when I was thinking about this with Stepana Vuk and I forgot to say before is that I when I watched their free dance and I've had a hard time making through it even though we liked the singer when uh, Hubble and Donahue used it last year and obviously it's a knockoff program but the difference to me is that like after two minutes of this free dance I'm like okay I get it we're gonna right. be rock we're gonna flail our arms around and we're gonna be like a little sultry and but it doesn't maintain your interest even though it's right. in your face it doesn't like build whereas it's why all these people do these medleys to help us give us that contrast very few people can sustain that one idea or one mood mm -hmm. an entire uh, an entire program you know like hubble and donna he would have those highlights where you know she would be between his legs and, and then like through the arm and you know like she would express the music and this is missing that from arena joke like this might be why she's more of a junior ice dance coach as part of a senior because she's not building the program throughout it right You're not maintaining the story and the interest and wanting to give it all of the points you know i just think it's not as brilliantly crafted so yeah yeah, I, I mean, Flash, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot. Like no. Two minutes in, I'm like, all right, I got it. Like, this would be a nice exhibition. Like, this is... Okay. I'm pulling up the name so I don't miss it. It's Angelika Krylova's team. Uh, Mozgov? Yeah, um, Pepita and Mozgov. Is, yeah, I couldn't... What What is her last name? Isn't it Pepita? And Mozgov? Or Popova or something? Popova and Mozgov. Sorry, I, sorry, yeah. Okay, okay. It's her first name. Remember like, exactly. Okay. Okay. The... I don't know why the world has somehow shunned Angelika Krylova because the minute I watched their rhythm dance, even though it was failing, when he's in some, showing you the chest hair that you love. Let's let's. Just I know, and I really do. So it takes one to know. We one. had a viewer ask us about that in the beginning if you were into him, and you yeah, were... well. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm also into Angelika Krylova, you see, because the thing about that rhythm dance is it, things pop out at you as not the usual fare. Now, it was the usual fare in early 2000s, but it's no longer the usual fare. And a couple of approaches to the rotational lifts, a couple of the positions, I was just like, thank you for just being different. Thank you for just drawing my attention to something. I mean, there's a disconnect a little bit in, in the rhythm dance and some the music is such a miss in the free dance, but there are unique and fascinating moments. And it just made me think, I kind of miss the An Angelica teams. I kind of miss also that um, vocabulary of movement being a part of the competition instead of all this kind of variations on a theme. Well, she didn't go, she just moved countries. This is just her first year okay. with a new team. I know, I she know. was there last yeah. year. So 
Uh, I am, you know, I think there's, po I, you know, I was thinking that if Ilyina and Soloviev actually do compete, you know, and I know that they've been kind of Instagram baiting about whether they should. And if, if it's for real, I think they should go to Krilova because they've already been to Julian. <laughs> they've right. already been to Igor. They already have been to Marina. And I was like, we've already traveled the world. And if they... They've been to Alexieva. I think that they should go there. And if they are I to compete. Thought, I really thought after Sochi, she was going to emerge alongside Marie France, uh, Marie mm -hmm. France as a more dominant coaching presence. And she she all but disappeared. Well, she wasn't a political force. I think that's what yeah. happened. You know? Which is too bad because I think she has something to offer. Yeah, I think that was more about politics than necessarily yeah. teaching. Clearly. So. <laughs> yeah, it had to have been. Yeah. So. And apparently she's quite blunt. She will really work on all of the details. She will not let Nathan Bartholomew get away with anything. When he is... Um, Good. She yeah. shouldn't. No. Yeah, I think yeah. Hawaii and Baker said that she was quite blunt. So that's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she did make them look beautiful. So that was... She did, it. yeah. Yeah, so what was your moment of the Russian Nationals, Jonathan? All of it. Oh, oh, we didn't oh. talk about this. Zdilina. Um... <laughs> the microphone situation and the kissing <laughs> the best um, and Yevgenia Medvedeva first of all she did say the F word twice when the I know I kind of love her for it it just makes it seem real love. yeah love yeah all their back and forth and when Brian had to convince her to stand up he's like because that clapping was was a beautiful moment actually yes. um and he was like get up stand up and then in the for the free she was up and standing and he pulled her down well Brian like, Orser apparently they had him in a huge suite and I said oh you know that's bugged um but anyway yeah, exactly. they had him in like this beautiful hotel suite there but my moment of the Russian nationals is when Brian Orser goes Oh my God, you know your mom is going to freak out. And then she goes, what? And he goes, your mother is going to freak out. <laughs> After they went 14th? <laughs> I, yeah, I saw that. I didn't catch the mother comment. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I died. Okay. <laughs> True words have never been spoken like, Amazing. by a coach. Because you know that is true of all of the mothers. That of all of them. Yeah, exactly. All of them. Yes. What was your moment of the Russian Nationals? I think just any time I see Kosternaya is just a beautiful She's an angel moment for, you. She's for me. An angel. She is an angel for me also, whether she is third or first. Spread your wings, girl. <laughs> um, for me and the men, it was nice that Kovtun did that. Um, but, you know, any you chance... You being like... <laughs> yeah, and you know she waited for those cameras because she was like, oh, and then the camera came and she kind of saw it, and then she really laid it on, and I was she like, oh, you actress, so Tatiana. Good. She would be so yeah. good on the... Yes, and like, don't you think that if Tutorica were a better actress, she would have had more success in 90s Russian ice dance? Like, that was really what held her back. She clearly has that fire, so... Oh, the I mean, her face doesn't move now because she's clearly gotten so much filler, but before... I like, I think she she still didn't have the expression, but I, God, I love her. I love watching. To find those those clips. Now, another interesting thing is, now when I sing in Russian, I do a transliteration, okay. or I use the international phonetic alphabet, so they, they, you know, kind of dumb it all down, so it's the basic sounds of every language. But so when I see the Cyrillic, I'm always like, oh, I have to think about it, because they had leader and current, right? Yes. And one of them just literally looked like, with the characters, it just looked like it said nude. And I was like, who is? Wait, why are you giving away? Does that mean like now on there? Is that probably what yeah, they're saying? No, I, I think, I think it, it's, it was for current. Yes, but it might, mean, it might not mean current. It might be the word for now or something. Like, it may be a different word. Well, you know? It's not quite an N. You know, it goes up, yes. goes across. Yeah, 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 and yeah, does yeah. So it was, it, yeah. It, it was, I was like, wait a minute, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what was your moment of the week, Dave? Oh, it was Brian Orser in The Kiss and Cry, for sure. Oh, was, yeah, fair enough, yes. fair enough. Okay. I was thinking about, do you know that, like, the Russian word for the balance beam is the log, by the way? Like, if you ever... Oh. Because, like, the wood beam, but they call it, like, the log. Anyway, just fun facts that you need to know about. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, it was the best that we could hope for, and... We will see you back tomorrow to discuss 
Japan. So, спасибо, хорошо, очень хорошо. Um, сделано. We'll see you tomorrow. Hold an edge. Yeah. Look sexy. <laughs> Bye, guys.